We're here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're speaking with Marcos Ornelas, who is a sixth grade teacher in the Robles School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. So the name of your school is your Main Avenue School. Yes. So tell me all about being a sixth grade teacher. Uh, well, it's pretty exciting. You know, sixth grade is a time of a lot of um, growth in students. You know, they, they learn how to um, you know, become themselves and it's really, really neat to take part in that helping them learn how to be, uh, be better students and, and find their way. So what are some of the challenges you face in preparing your sixth graders for you know, big time middle school? Because that, that is a huge transition for students. It is, it's a, it's a source of trepidation for a lot of them and a lot of the parents as well. Um, going from an elementary school where uh, there's a lot of interaction between parent and teacher and uh, a lot of those kids have been there for their entire school career, uh, it can be a big change for them. And so try to make sure that they are learning those skills to help them be self-sufficient, learning how to be responsible, learning how to keep themselves organized, learning how to um, learning how to adjust to being in new situations. Try to do a lot of things to, to foster that. So tell me about uh, your classes and, and the student makeup and the demographics and, and what challenges you might face there. So our school um, is in, a, in an interesting area. We have uh, some rural areas around us. We're a little bit suburban and we're very close to, um, to the heart of downtown too. And so we have a, a good, good mix of students. We have a, a very diverse background. Um, and because of that, we have a lot of opportunities for students to, to interact with people who have different experiences than they do. So when you're preparing your students, I want to get back to preparing your students for junior high school. You talk about teaching them the responsibility and, and those things. Uh, it's really hard to drill good habits into students. So what are some things you do to, to really kind of you know, hammer some of those points home of, of the value of that and how that's going to help them further on? Well, try to do a lot of things um, to put the, the responsibility to keep themselves, um, keep themselves organized on on, on them and so we'll do little things like uh, taking notes and so we have um, we have notebooks for our different subjects and getting into those habits where where they find um, that they find themselves responsible for their for their learning and the hope is that as they go on into middle school and high school they'll, they'll have those those basics down those foundations down so they're not struggling with that kind of thing and then helping them learn how to work work with one another is also a big focus in our classroom of knowing that you know, as you go further in your education you're going to find yourself working with people that that um, you've never known or people that maybe you disagree with in some respects but um, knowing that knowing how to work with people who you may um, have differing opinions with is is critical to, to all of us and so those are things that I really try to foster in our classroom, try to give students a lot of opportunities to, to work together and, and learn how to collaborate. And you're dealing with not only the academic side, but the social emotional side of the preteen and, and the joys of, <laughs> of that as well. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that uh, really try to encourage in our classes is, is treating each other with respect. And we do a lot of things to to encourage that. It, little things from um, making sure that we address each other respectfully, uh, making sure that we're all listening to the person who's sharing, those kinds of things that you would, you would hope to find in a typical elementary school classroom, but we really try to make sure that we're, we're all, um, we're all uh, treating each other in that same way. Uh, we also, one of the big things that we've done the last few years is go on our outdoor education field trip to um, Nature Bridge, which is an organization um, that has a location out in the Golden, I think it's the uh, Golden Gate National Recreation Center out mm -hmm. in the Marin Headlands. And it's a really great opportunity for them to, to go away from home for a few days and learn how to, um, learn how to interact with kids from other schools, uh, teachers from other schools, and, and just get a chance to um, to spread their wings a little bit, and so learn how to learn how to get along with uh, with others. Do you have any special projects or programs in your class that you use to keep the kids engaged? Well, we do a lot of work with um, our kindergarten buddies, so that's one thing that we do. Mm -hmm. They would try to go over and, and read with our kindergarten buddies and do little projects with them on a weekly basis, and uh, that's something that that we uh, that they enjoy, and it's really great to see those kindergartners um, working with those big kids. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it teaches them responsibility. Absolutely. Right. They, they do. And, and a lot of them take that very seriously when we go. They realize that uh, they, are, they have a chance to be uh, a great example for those kids. And, uh, and a lot of them take that very, very seriously. Um, and as a teacher, uh, how do you see yourself you know, as a role model, um, especially for, for young men? Because um, let's face it, there may be more females than males in the teaching profession. Um, and when a, when a young uh, male student sees a male teacher, you know, you know, what kind of, you know, what is some responsibility that you have or that you might feel? Oh yeah, that's a that's a good uh, good question, a good point. I, you know, I really try to show students that uh, that I care about them and I, I care about their success as students, and uh, I do that by by treating them with with respect and holding them accountable to treating others with respect. And I, I really try to make sure that uh, I come into the classroom and, and go into our instructional day with that, with that in mind, that, that I, I care about our class and that I want to show them that's, uh, that is a way to, to show people um, respect, is to, is to treat them that way. Leading by example. Absolutely. How long have you been a teacher? Uh, this was my 18th year. Oh gosh. So um, over that period of time you've obviously seen some changes in education. Yes, absolutely. What are some of the biggest ones? Well, uh, the one that jumps to mind right off the bat is the, uh, the need to implement technology into our, into our daily instruction. Um, you, the students, when I first started teaching, uh, we had a computer lab at our school. Uh, we had a couple computers in the classroom but they weren't um, integral necessarily to our instruction. It was, we did some word processing and a little bit of um, reading comprehension practice uh, on, those, on those computers, but it was, it was almost a novelty. Uh, but now it's, it's critical. You know, we, use, we use them as often as possible to do research, to, uh, to, to do a lot of assessment, and uh, for a myriad of other, other reasons as well. And, and that is something that can will probably be um, more and more important as we go forward and so making sure that our students have access to that and that they are well well versed in and using those kinds of uh, platforms um, is something that that has changed a lot and, and I noticed you said the need to infuse technology in the class because there is a need you have to do it absolutely as these students go further and further in their careers um, these kinds of skills will be expected and uh, if we want and hope for our students to be successful, uh, it's, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're preparing them for that. Plus sixth graders, they could probably give you some tech support, right? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So what does it mean for you to be named a Teacher of the Year? It, it's of course a great honor. Uh, I was not expecting it, and I've um, kind of always seen myself as, as a teacher who, who goes in and does his best and, and does as much as I can for my students and for, for our school and to, ha to be recognized in this way was a, um, was a surprise but a, but a great honor and I feel, very, um, I feel very grateful for it. Now, do you have a teacher or two in your past that uh, inspired you to become a teacher? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and the one that I always come back to was uh, the great Chuck Miltenberger. He was my uh, chemistry teacher in high school and it, it was a, a time when I uh, I needed some some support and some reminders of what I was capable of, and he and he really did that for me. Mm. So there's always a teacher or two in our backgrounds. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you coming in and talking with us, and congratulations to you. We've been speaking with uh, Marcos Ronellis, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Robles School District. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Great. Thank you very much.